In the introductory video, it was asserted that water played a key part in the construction of the Great Pyramid. Also, we contend that the Great Pyramid was built level by level. First, the paving stones that supported the first level of casing stones were set in place. Then the first level of casing stones were set in place. There was also a wall built around the Great Pyramid construction site. The following animation will help visualize the first stages of construction. First, the paving stones and the wall around the Great Pyramid were built. Then the first level of casing stones were set in place. The casing stones were cemented together watertight. Then a water lock was built directly into the first level of casing stones. The original builders provided a water source to the building site. The source of this water is described later in subsequent videos. The wall around the Great Pyramid was built as an enclosure wall to impound a pond. The first level of casing stones, precision cut and cemented together watertight, also impounded a pond. These two ponds were at different levels. The pond impounded by the casing stones was of a higher level than the pond impounded by the wall around the Great Pyramid. The water lock built into the wall of casing stones allowed stones on barges to travel between the lower pond and up into the higher pond. Water entered the area impounded by the enclosure wall built around the Great Pyramid construction site. Water filled the area impounded by the first level of casing stones. The casing stone pond is higher than the enclosure wall pond. These two ponds are connected by a water lock. The stone on a barge can move from the pond impounded by the enclosure wall up into the pond impounded by the casing stones through the water lock. With the introduction of water, the movement of stones on barges becomes extremely easy. The use of water locks to move cargo is fast, powerful, and consistent with the direct physical evidence on the Giza Plateau. This is why the casing stones were cemented together watertight, which allowed this efficient system to move the stones up into the pond impounded by the first level of casing stones. The use of water, barges, and water locks is versatile and adaptable to all of the stone moving requirements necessary to construct the Great Pyramid. The techniques used to move this and set in place the stones of the Great Pyramid will be described in subsequent videos, but for now, let's watch the stone on barge move from the lower pond up into the pond impounded by the casing stones. A stone on barge enters the water lock. The stone on barge rises up to the level of the pond impounded by the casing stones. The stone on barge leaves the water lock and enters the pond impounded by the casing stones. That is how stones on barges were able to be moved from the pond impounded by the enclosure wall up into the pond impounded by the first level of casing stones. But how was that heavy casing stone weighing up to 16 tons moved from the barge to its final resting place? How did the barge with casing stone get to the building site from the Nile River? How was the rough cut interior stones for the first level set in place with the pond in the way? How are the most massive stones weighing up to 70 tons moved to the building site and set in their final destination? These questions and more are addressed in subsequent videos of this video series about how the Great Pyramid was built.